Good morning, everybody. This video is for my critical thinking class as we enter into now week four of the course. Um, I just want to make a video, share the screen, talk about the announcement for the week, take a look at the assignment and the discussion, just to make sure we're all on the same page. Um, so let's get into it. So here's this week's announcement. Um, last week we had a great discussion on the use and complexities of language and we completed the nonverbal language assignment. Uh, this week we're moving on to discussing the importance of knowledge and evidence. Um, so it's all about moving beyond opinions and held beliefs, thinking about why we think a certain way, why we believe a certain thing, why we hold a certain position. Um, we always need evidence to support our claims. Um, so our work for the week includes the perception discussion. The perception discussion is an interesting one. Um, it runs from Wednesday the 18th through Sunday the 22nd, Wednesday to Sunday, like all of our discussions. And first posts need to be in by Friday, just like always, and you need to create or submit a few replies to your classmates, like always, um, in order to earn full credit. Uh, the discussion is an interesting one because it focuses on the concept of groupthink. So groupthink is basically the idea that when individuals become part of a group, um, they tend to think and act in ways that they would never do as individuals. Um, they tend to accept and believe what the others around them think and feel, um, and it sort of takes on this kind of group or mob mindset. Um, and it leads to a lot of interesting questions like, can we actually work together in groups and still maintain our individual critical thinking, our individual ideas, our self-identity, um, are all good, are all groups, is all, are all examples of group think negative? Um, <clears throat> can they be positive? Things like that. It's an interesting topic to think about. So again, that's running from Wednesday to Sunday um, with first posts being required by Friday. We also have the experience and expertise assignment due on Sunday the 22nd um, by 11.59 p.m. This is not a hard assignment. You only have to write two paragraphs for it. Again, please only write two paragraphs for it. For some reason, I always get a few students that want to write like a book on this, this, this particular prompt, and it's specifically asking you to write two. Um, let me share the screen with the assignment prompt, and we'll go over it together. OK, so <clears throat> Malcolm Gladwell is a popular current author who wrote a book called Outliers. Um, and in this book, he claims that there is sufficient evidence to conclude that before someone becomes an expert at something, they must put in 10,000 hours of practice. Gladwell bases this claim primarily on the work of the psychologist Anders Ericsson. Your assignment is to write two paragraphs. The first paragraph needs to support Gladwell's 2,000 hour rule. Um, and the second one needs to go against it. So you're writing two separate paragraphs. The first one, you're arguing that the 10,000 hour rule to um, expertise is true. And in the second one, you're arguing that the 10,000 hour rule is false. In both arguments, you need to use reason, research, and examples. Please do not base your arguments on first person relational narrational examples. Um, for academic writing and academic arguments, it should always be third person. It should always be based on research, evidence, and examples. The reason is first person narrational examples are subjective. So for example, if you tell me that um, pineapple is great on pizza, and I tell you that pineapple is disgusting on pizza, who is right? Who is wrong? We both are. We're both right. Um, or wrong, depending on how you look at it, because it's entirely subjective. It's opinion, it's taste. My experience of pineapple on pizza is it's gross. Your experience of pineapple on the same pizza might be that it's delicious. Um, first person, I feel pineapple is bad on pizza, or I feel pineapple is good on pizza, has no place in academic writing, um, because it's entirely subjective. It's based on taste or opinion. So we need to move beyond, like, first personal, first person I feel, or one time when I was doing this, it took 10,000 hours, or I learned how to do this without it taking 10,000 hours. That's not what the assignment is asking. 
Um, and it's not an academic argument. Keep it third person, use research, use examples, think this through, do some, do some research on the internet or on the database. The other thing is um, make sure you are arguing the correct thing here. Um, a lot of students in the past have tried to rely on the whole idea of practice makes perfect. There is a big difference between practice makes perfect and 10,000 hours of practice. So be specific in your arguments about the terminology that we're using. 10,000 hours, expertise. Um, try not to oversimplify. I mean, you don't wanna make it too complicated, but at the same time, I've had students in the past who say like, I learned how to tie, tie my shoes and it didn't take 10,000 hours. Pretty sure that's not what Gladwell's talking about. He's talking about like expertise in a field or a complex skill, um, not bunny ears around the tree, whatever, right? Whatever that little saying is for tying shoes. Okay, so that's the assignment. You're only writing two paragraphs, one in favor, one supporting the 10,000 hour rule for expertise, one going against the 10,000 hour rule for expertise. Let's look at the rubric real quick. Remember with all assignments, you should always look at the rubric. Um, for this class and any other classes that you have, you need to know what you're being graded on. Eight points for your argument in support of the rule. So do you have a good paragraph that supports the rule that uses third person, narrative, or third person objective research-based arguments? Eight points for a paragraph against the rule. Six points for use of reasoning, research, and examples. Uh, that means you should have all three, reasoning, research, and examples. And then three points for writing mechanics stuff. That's it. It's not a hard assignment. Um, I didn't mean to make it sound more challenging than it is. I just wanted to stress a few of the pitfalls that students have come across in the past with this assignment. So again, uh, that is due Sunday night. The discussion is Wednesday to Sunday. If you have questions about any of these things, let me know. Um, shouldn't be too challenging of a week. At least I hope not. Um, if you do have problems, just let me know, and I'm happy to help you out. Uh, see you guys next time.